What's going on guys? Today we're gonna to be talking about the back squat and more specifically, how to stop folding in the back squat like a folding chair. So far too often I see lifters hitch forward so much to the point in which when they're standing back up with that weight, it's pretty much all back and they're not really getting a lot of quad and glute usage. So this video was originally gonna be designed for taller lifters. However, I think a lot of folks actually struggle with this issue. So I have four different tips to help you maintain a slightly more upright torso position in your squat, and then hopefully you can bring those into your form. The whole goal of this video is to not necessarily have you walk away and feel like you're squatting wrong or that you need to change everything. Instead, what I wanna do is provide you with a couple of tips and better ways to conceptualize the squat as a whole. So tip number one is to elevate the heels. So this could be wearing weightlifting shoes, using wedges, however you wanna elevate the heel, it can be a fantastic means for helping you maintain a more upright torso position. There's a reason weightlifters use weightlifting shoes. It's because in their movements, if their chest is falling forward, it is a make or break for successful lifts. So similarly, most lifters can benefit with elevating the heels. When we elevate the heel, we're gonna be putting our foot into a natural level of plantar flexion, which then allows our ankle to feed better into an environment of dorsiflexion. So in layman's terms, basically, we're gonna put ourselves into a position to feed better into having those knees track over the toes while maintaining a more upright torso position. That heel is going to allow us to sit back onto a surface and maintain our balance a little bit better. So whether you are a power lifter, weight lifter, or just recreational lifter, elevating the heel can be a fantastic tool. And now do note that your bar position will play a role also into how much you are pitching forward. For example, I have a more hybrid low bar squat. It's like a hybrid between a high bar and low bar. And so I will always have a slight forward pitch to my squat. And that is very important to understand because even if you elevate the heel, you might still have a forward pitch. However, if we can get you to maintain just a slight deviation from more of your upright torso mechanics, especially at heavier loads, then we're gonna be in a better place across the board. All right, the second tip is to conceptualize the eccentric in the squat differently. So this is for all the folks who have the cues, sit back and knees out. So let's talk about those two cues for a second and also why I don't like them for pretty much 99% of the lifters that use them. So sit back is a cue that is often given to beginners to help them understand that, hey, coming up on my toes during the eccentric isn't necessarily a good thing. So we tell the beginner to sit back and it creates like an overcorrection of coming up onto their toes. Now, when we say knees out, this is usually for that beginner who is squatting and just having those knees completely collapse in with no self-control. This does not mean internal rotation. This means like the knees are literally folding and buckling. But the problem is, is that when we start using the cue sit back and knees out for recreational lifters and folks who have a good idea of how to squat, they can actually be a little bit limiting with our range of motion. So when we look at the back squat, we're already gonna have a slightly pitch forward position just due to the posterior loading. If we think sit back, as soon as we start that eccentric, we're gonna then be folding over like a chair. And oftentimes what you'll see is the knees start to get limited from tracking forward. Because we're thinking sit back, we don't necessarily think about breaking at the knees as hard as we normally would if we didn't use that cue. When we think about knees out, what ends up happening too is we start jamming those knees out so far that we almost end up creating like this pocket to fold into, almost like a good morning. So instead of using those two cues, I want you to think about one, instead of sit back, sitting into the hole. So think about sitting into a hole as if like there's a cylinder of glass around you and you're supposed to sit down into it without shattering that glass. If you hinge forward too far back, you're gonna break that glass. So think about sitting into the hole with that glass cylinder around you. Now, instead of thinking about knees out, think about finding your big toe throughout your entire lift. What's gonna end up happening here is your knees will naturally go out a little bit anyways when you start your eccentric, but when you start to pass that 90 degree range of motion in your squat, you'll always usually have a little bit of internal rotation present. This is due to the adductors assisting with the glutes coming out of the hole to extend the hip. So if you find your big toe, it's gonna to help you from overly externally rotating and driving those knees out and allow you to have a slightly more normal slash efficient gait patterning with your legs during the eccentric. All right, so tip number three is to check your pelvis position. So what I want you to do here is video yourself from the side in your squat. So what we wanna look for is any sign of like a grandiose or over-exaggerated anterior pelvic tilt. A lot of times when we present with a fairly significant anterior pelvic tilt in our squat, 
we can end up dumping the weight forward a lot, especially early on in the eccentric, and we can experience a greater presentation of butt wink, especially as we hit our full range of motion. So what I want you to do is video yourself from the side, look at your pelvis position, and if you do notice that you do have a pretty significant anterior pelvic tilt, all I want you to do is think about just bringing your glutes in slightly and think about contracting them a little bit. I don't want you to think about going hardcore glute extension, full contraction, but just simply bringing in the cognizance of contracting a little bit and then thinking about sitting into the hole should change the overall mechanics of the eccentric as a whole in your squat. It's so subtle, but it can make a huge difference, especially for folks with longer torsos and femurs. If we're starting with an interior pelvic tilt, a lot of times we're gonna end up already pitching way more forward than we already are due to the posterior loading of the bar. So tip number three is to once again, check your pelvis position. A little bit of anterior pelvic tilt is not necessarily a bad thing. However, if you do notice that you're folding a ton and you're starting with a pretty significant anterior pelvic tilt, then you may want to reassess how you are positioning the pelvis in your squat. All right, so the fourth tip is shifting your mindset from, oh, squatting is just another exercise on leg day to appreciating it as more of a skill-focused exercise. I don't think enough people actually appreciate how much technique work goes into a really great back squat. So taking your mindset and then thinking about how much technique and skill goes into this movement patterning can be a game changer. So within this tip, I'm gonna talk about four different things to help you improve your skill of squatting. Number one is understanding the range of motion that you physically can achieve and that you need to achieve per your goals. So this is understanding things like specificity if you're competing in strength sports or just understanding that, hey, if you are a very tall individual, squatting ass to grass may not actually be that optimal for you. If you can achieve better ranges of motion doing things like hack squats, leg presses, etc., only achieve the range that you physically need to achieve depth in your squat so you don't put yourself into a position where the prime movers aren't actually able to do their jobs. So an example here would be somebody who, like myself, is really tall trying to squat high bar. If I try to go ass to grass, even with an elevated heel, so literally bring my butt cheeks to the back of my shins, what ends up happening is I end up folding forward a little bit and I end up having a ton of butt wink. Instead of going ass to grass just for the sake of doing it, I can achieve depth but also not put myself into a position where the adductors, glutes, and quads are not gonna be able to do their job. If I wanna go for full range of motion, I'll use unilateral variations, hack squats, or other exercises where I can use constraints to help me achieve better ranges of motion per the prime movers in the exercise. So subcategory number one is understanding that range of motion in your squat is multifactorial and there is no perfect one size fits all range of motion. If we're talking about achieving ranges of motion that actually utilize the prime movers in the squat, we're probably gonna need to be a bit more individual with our approach. The second subcategory I wanna talk about is using tempo and pauses. So if your goal is to stop folding over in the squat, by adding a tempo into your eccentric and focusing on how your knees and hips are breaking and how they're interacting with each other, it's an absolute game changer. So doing a mesocycle or two where you're adding in tempo squats can be a huge, huge game changer when it comes to what your chest and hips are doing in your squat. A lot of times when we dive bomb squats, we can lose out on some of our ability to focus on what our joints are physically doing. Now, when it comes to pause work, you can do a pause literal mid rep and then complete the movement. You can pause at the bottom. You can literally pause anywhere where you think you need to hyper focus on your form. So if there is a point in your squat where you notice you start dipping forward with a more moderate load, try stopping at that range to feel what might be happening. Is it your hips sinking back too much? Is it just your overall ability with your core and so as to maintain your torso position? These are all things that could be answered with pause work and tempo work. Subcategory number three is experimenting with one and a half reps. So a one and a half rep means you're gonna be coming down into your squat, hitting range of motion, coming back up, and then finishing your rep. So these are great because that abbreviated range of motion coming out of the hole can really help you focus on how your torso and hips are interacting when it comes to creating momentum out of the full eccentric in your squat. So when you're shifting to a standing from a squatting movement patterning, how are your hips and torso engaging with one another? One and a half reps can really help you focus on what you're doing there and how you can better position and sequence yourself in your squat. Subcategory number four is understanding your individual thresholds. So 
everybody will have certain thresholds in which the task at hand is going to cause their body to sequence slightly differently than it would sequence with lighter and more moderate loads. This is normal. It's present in every single sport. And this is why we practice really good foundational form because when we exceed those thresholds, we want to only deviate slightly from our consistent norm. We don't want to have a huge deviation because that's when you'll be squatting and you'll all of a sudden like fold and get trapped by the bar as opposed to having a slight pitch forward and then having to muscle through it. So by understanding your individual thresholds, you can then bake in training cycles where, hey, I'm focusing on this threshold where I know I start to fold forward a little bit more. For me, for example, that's around like 385 in my squat. I'll start to pitch forward a little bit more. So what has some of my training been looking like? A lot of wave loading with a lot of skill work around that exact threshold. So this gives me a lot of exposure to weights and loads that are very similar to where I start to have that presentation of more forward pitching and where I could focus on just the overall skill of navigating around that as I squat. So then that way, as I get more tired and more fatigued, I'm not deviating from this consistency. So subcategory four, understanding your thresholds. We all have them. Our body will always sequence to be most efficient per the task at hand and understanding where those thresholds lie can help you better conceptualize your squat and then program for it. All right guys, that wraps up this video talking about the squat and how to stop folding like a chair in it. If you like this video, hit me in the comments below and let me know, or if you have any feedback on the video, I thought it was gonna be a good idea to hold this barbell the whole time, and now I'm really regretting it. My right arm is like going numb, so <sighs> doing, it for, doing it for the clips, everybody. But as always, drop a like on the video, drop subscribe to the channel, and if you have any questions, once again, hit me in the comments below. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.